gosh, I went to design school, product design school, where I learned how to draw, always drew my entire life. And that's fleshed out the technicalities of drawing. So I really enjoyed illustrating, being a product designer. Really drawing is a language of design. If you can't draw it, you can't design it. Uh, so I learned how to draw and always enjoyed illustrating throughout my entire career. This is called uh, Sacramento. I thought it had a little political bias because I thought it was funny. Me, from my accent, you can tell I'm British. I thought it was funny being in San Francisco with a street sign of Sacramento and it's having uh, Chinese characters everywhere. And so I thought that was kind of telling in a way of how diverse our society is. It's a mixed medium where it's a chalk layering technique where I layer and fix chalks of different colours and then all the detailing rendering is done in gouache. A very standard product automotive design technique. I have been an artist photographer for my entire life. Um, I started at 16 when I was in high school and I've been working on photography and art ever since then. My piece uh, Three Falls is a image that was taken up in the uh, Sierra Truckee area about uh, two years ago. Um, I specialize in primarily do black and white landscape photography. I love water, love the movement of water. I was particularly attracted to this uh, location. I photographed there a dozen times, and, uh, but I particularly like this one here. Well, my years and years and years ago, I've always been interested in art. And, uh, uh, I got involved in photography as a young person. And, worked with photography through college. Uh, and I ended up teaching Photoshop for 15 years at uh, community college in Northern California. Uh, but it's my passion, it's always been my therapy. Uh, so when my head's not on very straight, I think my work is actually better. But uh, this is representative of some of my kind of thinking. I'm working on a series of motion images. Uh, some of the images are one shot, so there would be a long exposure with, with movement. This happens to be a composite. Uh, but in my morning meditation, one time it came to me that, uh, you know, the monkey mind is a big part of trying to meditate. And so this grew out of that awareness. Uh, certainly, I think, for anyone who's attempted meditation, they can understand that challenge. Well, I've been doing art basically all my life, and uh, my mom does art, and I got pretty serious about it around 2006. This is spinning in time, and it's an acrylic, and I like a lot of colors, and I tend to do things with a lot of motion, and I like circles, and mostly whatever I'm feeling, generally, and I do most of my painting outside, yes. I've drawn all my life. When I was little, I would always be drawing. My mom would take paper and pencil to keep me quiet, I guess. So I would just always was drawing something. It was sort of a natural thing. This is a watercolor of a friend of mine, and I am a very realistic artist. I do a lot of commissions for people. I do portraits, people portraits. I do dogs, cats, lots of horses, equine art, because I have horses. But this particular piece, I uh, was looking at my friend, we were sitting outside, and I just liked the way the, the shadows were going through his hat, his straw hat. And that's the only reason I did it, because I thought it was just an interesting look, and I thought it'd be interesting to try it. It was a little difficult, but it worked. Well, I've been painting like all my life, but currently I go to the San Francisco Art Institute, so it's been like a huge practice of mine lately, and I've been like really, um, into a series and this is part of it yeah so this is a piece that is um i think there's six others in the series and i do self-portraits all figure paintings very large scale and um yeah they're all party scenes um so this one's called a party of one and it, and then i have like another one called alter ego so they're kind of just like stepping out of like daily life and routine and going into like a fun like celebration and imaginative place I started about 15 years ago and I did casual kinds of photography, you know, the standard travel kinds of things. And then I got involved in work and all those sorts of things and after I retired, 
And I thought, you know, I really love photography. I'd been doing it, but at a pretty low level. And so I got pretty serious about it about 10 years ago. And digital had come around by then. So I, I, I re-outfitted myself with a digital body. The old Nikon lenses fit and, and kept down that path. So um, I'm enjoying it. The dry, dark room is different. I had a wet, dark room. It was a great, a lot of, it was a tremendous amount of fun, but the dry, dark room is interesting also. It allows much more capability. It was taken in Italy. I was wandering around in a town, that, the name of which I actually forget, but anyway, I was wandering around in Italy, and this man, it was a slightly rainy day, and so this man in bright blue pants and a bright red umbrella turned down an alley. And I thought, this is, this is going to be a good picture. So I, I waited at the alley till some people kind of cleared away, and I took a picture of him from the back with the red umbrella and the right pants. And then I enhanced the red umbrella with some glitter to make it kind of shiny, sparkly kind of a thing. But basically it was a dark alley with a, a light at the end, so it, it, it highlighted him and brought it all together. Well, I always made arts and crafts things when I was a kid, but somehow ended up going to commercial interior design, so I had put this on the back burner. And then when I lived in the Bay Area, I got involved with the San Francisco Center for the Book, started collecting book and book arts, and started collecting things. And so from my collections of stuff, I made things. So I had done some printmaking and some watercolors. I had these big sheets, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So I sort of tore it up, and it was in the shape of a book. And I knew I was going to enter the show here, because I became a member about a year ago. And then I took a book cover and wrapped it in thread and just started doing things to it. And then I found, uh, I had bought an, an iPad and that box fit perfectly with my thing. I had a piece of plywood and that fit in there. So then I used some book binding material and just started playing around with it. And then I had a composition and it's just fun. And then I decided I would name it Secrets and Lies, but when I submitted it, it already had a name, which was Recovery. So, but it's more like secrets things. There's secret things in there. So I just like making fun books and there's no great meaning. It's just the composition and the colors is what attracts me to making art. I've been creating all my life. I have come from a family of artists and it's always been in my blood. This is called Blue Rain and it's, underneath this fabric is a picture of a pond with rain falling on it. And uh, the concept behind it is that uh, in nature, there is a struggle behind this scene that we're not seeing. It's a struggle between order and chaos. So uh, with my paintings, I try to bring that chaos and order to the surface through the piece fabric. When you look at nature really close up, it's actually really highly structured. There's lots of geometry involved in the way that a shell is patterned or a flower is patterned. And it's not the free-flowing organic natural thing we expect to see in nature, or that we associate with the word nature. So um, these paintings sort of bring to the surface that, that battle between chaos and order.